to another awesome day of Kids Crossing. It is now April, which is crazy. Spring is here. The grass is green. The trees are blooming. The sun is out. It is awesome. With the new month comes a new element. So we get to dive into that today and learn all that um, Jesus wants us to. But beforehand, let's go ahead and close our eyes, fold our hands, and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for bringing us all here today. I thank you for the lovely weather. I thank you for the sunshine and the flowers and the birds and just the wonderful um, gift that spring is. Lord, I just ask that you help us to focus today and learn all that um, you want us to about this lesson. Lord, I ask that you help us to apply it to our, our lives and that we can um, hide it in our hearts so that it is for, with us wherever we go. We love you and praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so for the month of April, we are going to be talking about the element of service. And we touched a little bit on it last month when we talked about humility. Pretty cool that humility and service are back to back because they are hand in hand. So what you learned last month about humility is going to be similar to what we are going to be learning about service. So I want you to make sure that your listening ears are on, your lips are sealed, and you learn all that we can today. So it's pretty cool that God allows us and even wants us to bring our prayers to him. The one who created the entire universe and everything in it loves you and me enough to have a relationship with us. He wants to have a relationship with us. And that is truly amazing that we can are able to have that type of relationship with our Creator. And that's what we are here today, to continue to build that relationship, grow in our relationship with Christ. And how we do that is by learning about the elements and the big ideas. So like I already said, for the month of April, we are going to be talking about service. And service, it means selflessly helping or doing work for someone. Now, can you think of a job where a person is hired for the purpose of serving? Basically every job, but there's some specific ones where serving is the main one. Like at a restaurant, you serve food to the customers. Um, you think of our policemen and our firefighters. They serve the community to help protect. All the firefighters the past couple weeks who have been working tireless hours to make sure that our homes and our people are safe from the fires that have been going on. You think of all the military. They serve their country. But no matter where you're working, you are working to serve someone in some way. Now, there is an important word in this definition, and I want you to guess which one I'm thinking of. Selflessly helping or doing work for someone. The word selflessly is a very important part of this verse. In doing something helpful, but expecting a payment or something in return is not what we're talking about. Instead, we're going to explore what God's word says about helping others with a selfless attitude. It's not always easy, but we will learn that God is always ready to help us. So being selfless and being humble are the same thing. We learned about how to be humble last month. So we can just continue that into this month. So what God has to say is way more important than anything that I can say today. That's why every month we focus on a verse to help us remember what God has said in his word about what we are learning. And one of our main goals is to help you let God's word, the Bible, be your guide for everything. No matter what situation you are in, God's word can help you make a right decision. Now this verse 
If you do not have it memorized this month, even by the end of today, I'm going to be sad because this one is super easy. If you are going to memorize any verse to get a prize, now's your chance. I want you to be working every month, but this one is super, super, super easy. And it comes from Galatians 5.13, and it's actually kind of the end of the verse. But it says, serve one another humbly in love. All right, I'm going to read that one more time. Serve one another humbly in love. Galatians 5.13. So this verse says that love is the reason for Christians to serve others. The Bible teaches us to recognize that other people outside of God's family will know that we are different because of our love. Because of the love God has shown us, we should serve others. We need to wake up and be ready to respond to the many opportunities we will have to selflessly help or do work for others. This means we should always be on the lookout for ways to help, but without expecting anything in return. That's what serving someone in love means. So if you think the youth group, so a few of you get to graduate to the youth group in a few weeks, which is pretty fun, but the youth group has what's called work camp every year, and it is where they serve those in the community and those in the church. So they do different work projects like gardening or painting or cleaning or even just sitting down and talking with the residents at the nursing home. Then every single way they are serving someone else for the glory of God. And they don't get paid for it. In fact, they pay to do it. So instead of going to work and getting paid to do the job, they pay to go do the job. But it teaches them how to serve and how to serve with the right mindset of serving for the Lord, not for themselves or for anybody else. So each week of the month, we're going to focus on a specific big idea to help us learn our element of the month. Now this big idea is one thing we really hope that you will learn and be able to remember. So when your parents or somebody asks you, what did you learn today? This right here. That, this is what you tell them. Our big idea is Jesus showed the meaning of service. So Jesus set an example, and he showed us the meaning of service. Throughout the Bible, we get to read time after time after time where Jesus was actively serving and showing us examples that we can follow. Just like a couple weeks ago, when I tried to demonstrate how to juggle, we figured out I can't juggle, but I was showing you something, I was demonstrating, and Jesus demonstrates how to serve. He showed us how, um, different ways how we can serve. So he experienced the same kind of experiences that people still have to deal with today. When we look at the stories of Jesus in the Bible, we can see that he continually served others. The stories of Jesus help us know how awesome he is, but also give us a great example of someone that we should imitate every day. Like I've already said, the element of the month is service. And our big idea is Jesus showed the meaning of service. Service is selflessly helping or doing work for someone. We've all done work for someone at some time. But how many times have we done something and expected or hoped for something in return, like a payment or a favor? That may not happen very often, but the Lord wants us to make service to others something we do all the time. Often when we do a job, we wonder what will be paid for doing the job. We've all probably done this, but biblical service is so different. 
The way the world thinks about the word service is very different from biblical meaning. Jesus wants us to serve from the kindness of our hearts with love, not expecting any payment or favor in return. That no longer is selfless serving when we want something for ourselves in return. So often when people think about someone serving, they mostly think about someone who gets paid to take food to people who have ordered it, or someone who drives a delivery truck, or you name it. We could come up with so many different things. The work they do serves someone else. Do you think that they would do those jobs if they didn't get paid? Would a waitress willingly go to Olive Garden to serve people who sometimes aren't always very kind without getting paid? Like, oh, this is just really what I want to do today. No, unfortunately not. But it's okay. You can still serve others even while you're getting paid. You can go above and beyond and with the attitude that you have as well while you are working. The whole reason they do the job is to receive payment. This is something that adults have to do though. We have bills to pay, food to buy, clothes and shoes to provide, cars that need gas, and lots, lots more. People have jobs so that they can get paid and be able to take care of all of the things in their lives that cost money. Doing service the way the Bible teaches us is something that isn't very common today. Everyone is so used to being paid for the things that they do that there isn't much attention given to serving just to be helpful or kind. So you are at a great age to learn how to be someone who serves selflessly. One day you'll be super busy with a job and other responsibilities, but God wants you to also be committed to service. Remember, service is selflessly helping or doing work for someone else. That doesn't mean God wants you to tell your boss one day that, oh, you don't have to pay me for this job. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about allowing the Lord to show us how to be a servant to others. And our big idea focuses on the example that Jesus sets for us in Scripture. So just like last month, um, when we showed different examples of how Jesus served, we're going to be looking at them today so that we can get a true understanding of the mindset and the heart that we should have while we are serving others and to learn to recognize those opportunities when they come our way. So I want you to open up to Philippians 2, 3 through 5. It's interesting to note that we're going to be learning about Jesus showing the meaning of service by looking at a book of the Bible that was written after Jesus went back to heaven. So you may have a Bible with the red letters to show when Jesus was speaking. You don't see any red letters in Philippians. The verses we're starting, we are starting with are all about the way a Christian should learn to act and think like Jesus. So the Bible, we don't just learn stuff from when Jesus was on earth. We use the whole entire thing from before and after even. So after Jesus ascended to heaven, there are still examples and lessons that we can be learning. The book of Philippians was written by the Apostle Paul and was inspired by God as a letter to the people who lived in the city of Philippi. Even though it was many years after Jesus was on earth, many people had been learning about him and made the choice to become Christians, to follow Jesus' teachings. There are many things to learn from Jesus' life. But these verses will show us how to live as someone who understands the element of service and what it means to put it into practice. Into practice. So we're going to be in Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, val value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, 
but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So Philippians 2, 3 was our memory verse last week, or last month. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. So you already have an understanding of that. When we read this passage, we are shown a picture of the way God wants us to serve others. We are told to be unselfish toward other people. If you are a selfish person, you'll always have a hard time with service to others. Because selfish people only want what's best for me. Only want what benefits me. If I have to serve others, that benefits others and doesn't always benefit me. That's a selfish mindset, and that is something we do not want to have. When you are selfish, you look for ways to make things work out well for you or to make you look good. People with a service mindset look out for the interests of others instead of making sure to take care of themselves first. So putting others before their se themselves. Service to others means you value the lives and feelings of other people more than you value your own. And this is how Jesus lived when he was on earth. He showed everyone around him the meaning of service. As the Messiah, the promised one, Jesus was expected to be a king who ruled over all and would restore the nation of Israel to its previous level of power and prestige. However, Jesus was a very different type of king. He definitely was the king of kings and the lord of lords. After all, he was still fully God, even while he was fully man. But Jesus didn't come to the earth to be served like he was royalty. royalty. Instead, he came to be a servant to everyone. So just like we talked about last month, Jesus didn't come to serve, but to be served. So in Mark 10, 45, it says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So that was Jesus talking. He is telling people that even though he's the king of kings and the lord of lords, he didn't come to put himself above everybody else and make people serve him. He came to put himself at the lowest point and to serve everybody. This verse sums up Jesus' feelings about the meaning of service. Jesus did not come to be served by the people who should be serving him but rather he came to serve them. Of course, many of you know the service Jesus did for all of us wasn't something small. He didn't serve others by letting them go first in line or allowing people to choose what game to play. Jesus served others in many ways, but the greatest was by giving his life for them. So just last week when we celebrated Easter, that is the biggest act of service that Jesus showed not only the people back then, but the, us now and those who come before us. He did it for everybody. That is insane. He gave his life to save the world. Dying on the cross for us was a huge act of service and not something that any of us could imitate even if we wanted to. But personally, I don't want to be crucified. If I had to, but I don't, I don't want to be crucified. And so that puts it into perspective of how thankful we should be that Jesus took that punishment upon himself so that none of us have to suffer, suffer that com consequence. Since Jesus had a mindset of service, he didn't look for somebody to take his place on that cross. He didn't look for somebody who had, who had sinned or who had done all these terrible things. You're like, oh, I don't deserve it. Somebody else should go on that cross. No, Jesus had a mindset of love and of service to take 
the punishment that we deserved. In John chapter 13, it was almost time for Jesus to be crucified, and the disciples were gathered together for supper. Jesus got up from where he was sitting, took a container of water and a towel, and moving from one disciple to the next, he began to wash their feet. That was another act of service that Jesus showed. Right before he died, he washed the disciples' feet. He humbled himself, and he served his friends and his followers. Jesus also showed the meaning of service and the way he He met the needs of the regular people he came in contact with. There are many true stories in the Bible to show us examples of this. But there were many more that we have never heard because they weren't included in scripture. In John chapter 21, verse 25. It says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Let's read that one more time. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. That's hard to wrap your mind around. That in Jesus' short life and his short ministry, that he did so many things to serve not only God, his Father, but everybody he came in contact with and everybody beyond that. That if those things were written down, there would be way too many books. It says we would not have room for the books that would be written. I don't know if you've been to the library uh, or or like a big library, like the one in New York or Kansas City or somewhere like that. There are thousands upon thousands of books that you see, and that doesn't include the ones that are underground, stored in safe places. We don't even see those, but there's many, many more. And they're talking that if every single thing that Jesus did were written down in a book, it would be more than that. It would be way too many to hold, which is ridiculous. So we have so many examples that we get to follow because Jesus set them for us. We're not left wondering, oh, what should we do? I don't know how to do this. We do. We just need to follow the leader. Have you ever played follow the leader? That's what... Jesus is trying to get us to do, to play follow the leader. So on one occasion, Jesus used the lunch of a small boy who had come to hear him teach. That's another one. He fed thousands of people. He performed a miracle to feed hungry people. He served those people. He didn't just let them sit there hungry while he was talking and talking. He served them. He used the lunch of a boy to feed thousands. Do you remember the story of Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree. He served Zacchaeus. Many people hated Zacchaeus because he took too much of their money when they paid their taxes. He was not someone who others wanted to spend extra time with, except Jesus. When Jesus saw him up in that tree, he could tell this was a person who was ready to believe in him, but also someone who needed someone to care about him. So Jesus saw Zacchaeus, and he served him by giving him time, by giving him some attention. Just like at work camp, when we go to the nursing home, we are giving those people their We are giving them our attention by listening and talking with them. That is service. When you care for somebody enough to sit and want to listen to what they have to say, that shows somebody that you care for them. And that's what Jesus did with Zacchaeus and many, many more people. So if I went through all the examples we had, we would still be sitting here 
next week when it was time for Kids Crossing. So I'm not going to do that. But when you have time, go through your Bible. Look at the examples that Jesus has set. So there is no question that Jesus showed us the meaning of service. Serving others and being unselfish go hand in hand. Serving others means caring about other people's feelings and needs more than you care about your own. When we decide to live a life of service, you may, be, you may worry some about your needs or how your needs are going to be met. But the Lord will take care of you. Matthew 6.33 tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and all other things will be added to our lives. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you as well. When we are doing work for Jesus, when we are serving his people, he's going to take care of you. All right? God's got you. So to close out today's lesson, I want to give you some ways to start living your life with the mindset of serving others. First, do you struggle with serving others? Do you have trouble loving others in the way that Jesus modeled? If you do, ask the Lord to help you. Pray about it. Talk to somebody. Have somebody pray with you. He can change your heart and help you if you let him. The way this happens is by allowing God to teach you through what you read in the Bible. He can teach you to love others with kindness and compassion. Now the second thing that you can do to intentionally place others first in everyday life, really think about the needs of the people around you and look for ways to help them. Be intentional. That's a big word. Intentional means you are doing something with purpose. You are doing it on purpose. You are meaning to do it. So when you are intentional, you are purposely looking for ways that you can serve. Now the third thing you can do is simple. Listen to God and do what he says. There will be times in your life when you see a situation and think, oh, I could probably help that person out. I wonder if I should. Well, the answer more than likely is yes in some way you should be able to help that person whether it's just giving them a warm smile because you see they've had a rough day or if it's carrying groceries for somebody or you name it there's so so many ways that we can serve when you ask god to help you think of others first and you are intentional about looking for ways to serve you will more than likely see many opportunities so think about how our world could change if more people looked for ways to serve the people around them on a daily basis how could things change in your house would things be different on the team that you play on what could happen in your classroom if everyone looked for a way to serve one another i want you to think about that and consider what God might want you to do differently this week based on this lesson. Because when you are serving, when you are intentionally looking for those opportunities, you're also setting an example for those around you to follow. And then it spreads. So let's all work together to help each other develop the same mindset Jesus showed in the Bible. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful lesson. Lord, I thank you for the example that Jesus set on how to serve others, um, even those who can be difficult to love and to serve. Lord, I ask that you give us a humble heart and a selfless mindset that we can serve each other in love. Lord, as Galatians 5.13 says, to serve others humbly in love serve one another humbly in love. Lord, I ask that you help us to do that. You empower us to go throughout our week and be intentional about looking for those opportunities to step out of what I want and do something for somebody else. Lord, I thank you for who you are um, and just everything that you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen.